Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in another episode of Painting Masters. In today's episode, I'm going to feature works by the fantastic artist Morton E. Solberg, who unfortunately passed away last month, I believe on the 10th of January 2022. Um, so I do recommend you check out the link I'm going to put to the website and gallery and you can read more about him. A very interesting artist, a true lover of nature and was well versed in multiple mediums. You're going to see works in watercolor and gouache and acrylics and oil and mixed um, oil, maybe not, but the rest, yes. Um, so very interesting. And I hope this could be like a proper tribute uh, to him uh, after him passing away. So I hope you're going to enjoy this episode. Let's jump into it and look at the paintings. So we'll start with my absolute favorite painting. I will say stick around if you can to the end of this video. I'll do a proper outro and we'll do a couple of announcements that may interest you. But in any case, uh, I'm going to start with this painting, which is my favorite for sure, for multiple reasons. And I think if I had to say anything really about Morton's artwork, and this one's called, uh, I wrote now, Waiting for the Fog to Lift, it's that genius composition of using the uh, negative space of the paper white to not only cleverly plan the painting itself, but also feel like the paper white is a part of the painting. It's not like a cool splash of color and then a cool edge to the shape. The white of the page actually feels like a part of the painting, even though it's not, even though this isn't necessarily a snowy scene, right? Um, so just a brilliant use of that. Now, I will say also the subject, these wolves, they look great. Uh, and, and I love how he arranged them one close, one far. Now, I'm actually not sure about uh, the source of these, whether it was a photo he took uh, and carefully plotted out the composition for this one. It could be an interesting read. I should check that out. Um, or uh, it's a combination of a couple of photos um, or some of it was done plein air and some of it is, is studio work. I'm not sure about that. It would be interesting to dive deeper on that. Uh, as for the color scheme, and of course, the, the, the contrast and the values are so good. It, it's just it makes the wolf pop, right? Uh, the front one. Uh, and then the color scheme itself is very complementary in terms of the cools and warms. Uh, a lot of these burnt orange sienna feeling to it uh, mixed with the blue. Just a great combination. You can never go wrong with that. Now, and I will mention something else, and we will see it in future paintings as well. His ability to convey realistic and atmospheric conditions and light and shadow when there is no high contrast is something I found highly impressive. Because again, the sharper the contrast is, it's easier to read the shapes, it's easier to understand them. And that's what I always recommend beginners and myself included, I always try to tackle these scenes with strong enough of a contrast, right? But you will see in future uh, paintings and next paintings I'll show you, He's able to convey that no matter the light and shadow conditions. So that's just brilliant, brilliant work, brilliant overall composition and use of the paper white to really complement the subject, make it feel like a part of the entire page, even the white parts. Just great, great, great. I don't think there's too much I can say about that. Uh, let's just zoom in a bit. The quality of the photos varies and this one is OK. There are worse, there are better, uh, but just brilliant. That sense of depth leading us into the painting and all the way to the back where it just completely fades into the paper, right? Just genius. Uh, so let's do another one. And yeah, this one's called, I think, uh, His Domain. Uh, so another kind of play on that just great concept of using the paper white. And I will say one more thing. There, there is even more of that aspect of pulling us into the through the frame, these splashes and kind of leading us to the forest and the elk or moose, I'm not sure. Uh, and then it goes into the distance and into the mountains, just brilliant. And even if he would have painted this as a full scene without the paper white, I'm sure it would have been a beautiful scene. Uh, this one has a lot of like, um, I don't know, I don't know if unrealistic colors, but there is a hint of increasing the saturation and making the photo kind of like you would edit a photo and make it more saturated, more vibrant. There's a hint of that. And, and it even moves a little towards feeling illustrative because of that. But there's also a lot of expression there. Like for example, all of these blues down here, um, that, you know, foreground blue, background green, that's usually the other way around. All of these um, blurred out areas that play a major role in 
helping us focus on what matters, right? Uh, that's uh, edges is something I'm going to talk a lot about in the upcoming water polo realism course. So edges, they just the more I study them, the more uh, apparent to me how important they are, right? And these are mixed, by the way. I'm not sure if this is this is probably a lot of these are watercolor and a bit of gouache or a bit of acrylics. Um, so just know that. Uh, I think I did mention that in the intro. Here's another cool one, uh, Egret, I think, great, great Egret. Um, what I love here is, of course, that, you know, that uh, uh, very extreme sideways uh, horizontal composition. It looks just wonderful. Uh, and the, the way the Egret cuts through that background, uh, it's just brilliant, like, a, like an X or a cross um, composition just looks so so good and one more thing I would say that that balance in not overworking those uh, areas of foliage is just something that's so apparent here there is a way to paint more details in the foliage there is a way to paint not every single grass blade and leaf but a lot of them and still have it uh, not be overworked and a big part of it here is that huge space of the water that is completely smooth right that actually plays a big role here uh, in uh, helping balance that those other more crowded areas so if, if you want to put in those details a great idea would be to include this big section that is just open like that now the clever part is how do you even put that in the context of a painting that feels whole and that is compositionally that it makes sense and this is the true brilliance and something that uh, I don't think can be taught but can be learned uh, which is an interesting I think I'll quote myself on that some things can't be taught but they can only be learned um, it's just something you have to you have to paint so much and and be so immersed in the process and, and maybe he did it a different way but I don't know this is just brilliant that's a really good one. And here's another one. I have a lot of uh, this is Sand Hill, Sand Hill Crane. Now, I'm not sure about the medium because it wasn't mentioned on the website, but I would guess it's kind of a mixed approach. It could be gouache, could be acrylics, could be even oils for all I know. Um, could be even some pastels. I have no idea, but uh, I wanted to include this one, a bit of a different one. Uh, again, tons of foliage that looks great. There is an underlying organization to it. And then the pattern of light and shadow, which you know I love. You know I love those contrasts. You know I love those patterns. It just looks so good. And and it's it seems like a strong contrast, but it's actually not that strong in some spots. For example, this highlight uh, on the uh, neck and the head. You know, the, the grass in the background is it's not super light, but it's also not super dark. There's a great rhythm to, to how he balanced the light and shadow. Um, and uh, I don't know, I just love this one, wanted to include it a bit more of a, um, a rougher feeling because of these brush marks that, that were done. I'm, again, I'm not sure what medium, but clearly not just watercolor. I would want to believe, right? I may be mistaken. Um, here's another one. There are a lot of these cranes and egrets scenes. Now, this one I wanted to include in particular because first off, there's a lot going on, which I love, but that what I mentioned earlier about not having a, that strong of a, of a light source and still maintaining that realism, this has a great, uh, this is a great uh, achievement of that. So if I zoom out a bit, this is, I would say, to a high degree, photorealistic. Uh, if you see this from afar, you would think, let me zoom out a real, real, uh, a lot, of, a lot. Uh, you will, you may think this is a photo, uh, seriously, because it, it nails that subtlety and value and color. Uh, so we, even when the contrast is low, which makes for a more challenging scene in my experience, especially with watercolor, and I think this is a mix of watercolor and again, gouache, um, just to achieve that kind of a thing is is a brilliant uh, feat, um, and and again all of the great compositional aspects of um, fading things into the paper white. Uh, I will mention one more thing that I love about his work, and a lot of these the angle is rather low, so everything looks squeezed behind. So if you look, for example, at the land behind the birds, uh, it's all very narrow, which really gives it this great sense of depth and cutting through the scene and looking into the distance, which is just beautiful. Uh, and again, putting the foliage without overworking it with preserving the balance with the rest of the scene. Just so good, so good. And here's one last uh, <laughs> seed of these uh, cranes. Um, I wanted to include this one because this has stronger contrast. So you get to see the difference, stronger light source, right? This feels a little more atmospheric. The, the foliage is a little more golden, which uh, happens 
often when the sun goes down or goes up of course so again i'm gonna alternate between the two look at this one a bit of a stronger uh, atmospheric feel to it and then the previous one a little more of a realistic light that this just a little more muted less saturated uh, on those um atmospheric elements like the grass with the light going through it making it um yellowy bright yellow um so for both cases, just masterful pieces. And I love the, the use of uh, subtle blues here, right? The, this looks all very blue in the in the context of the scene, but it's actually quite a muted blue. It's not that bright. Uh, and you will see this usage of, of blues soon again in, in another brilliant piece. This one's called uh, American Brittany Spaniel Number 2. It's just dogs. You can't go wrong with dogs. I wanted to include this one. I love it. This is said to be a watercolor from what I've seen. Now... If it's watercolor, it's painted quite, you know, thick, um, and and it's interesting. It's something I would like to try. If if it is indeed um, uh, watercolor, I don't know. It just encourages me to try using the medium in a bit of a different way, right? Um, but again, what makes this uh, is that beautiful contrast with the the foliage in this instance, and and the the fur almost it has this shine to it. And if you look at the borders closely, you'll see that, of course, this partially conveys the texture of the fur but you will see he included in a pretty genius manner some of that same white here notice how this area here looks a little milky uh, and that's because it, it mimics really well that effect of um of glowing or radiating light when a subject is so well lit compared to the background that some of that light actually obstructs the background uh, it happens with a hazy feel with foggy scenes but but here it's just because of the light the radiant light from the fur uh, which is a great effect uh, here are blue floral I wanted to include this one just because it is watercolor it is fresh it is flowy and it's a very good take on the subject in my opinion just really really impressive work um, that combination of smooth and sharp smooth edges sharp edges smooth transitions sharp transitions just brilliant and you can say a lot with just a few brush marks right this is this painting is uh, is is simple yet complex you don't have to use much to convey the idea i absolutely loved it and i wanted to to include one that's a little looser here uh, so let's see what else we have here this buffalo portrait uh which i love again not my medium but i always love seeing the brush marks so if you show the brush marks i'm gonna love uh love the work and and here you really see some of these uh something that sergeant used to do which i absolutely love once again uh, is showing those uh, and you can see those milky kind of brown and purple and slightly orange and slightly blue brush marks look fantastic in my opinion i love these scenes where the painting is in the middle and everything else is just empty don't have much of course in terms of technique to comment on this one but this is great work here's another one that i really liked once again using the paper white but what i love about this one is that it has two very clear focal points of course, the riders here, this one's called uh, Rain Calls the Spirit Riders. Uh, and this huge pile of rocks or a mountain, a small hill made of rocks. Uh, and to be able to plan a scene out like that, where you feel the depth, I can definitely feel the depth into the scene from the rocks into the riders and then even some mountains in the background and and to have the foreground be not necessarily the thing you would think, right? All of these rocks just a pile of rocks it it just works so well now i want to show you something you see this uh, rock here with which has a bit of green and the, like the the color the strongest colors are present here on this rock so you see a lot of greens and a lot of reds and some blues here and yellows very strong this alone is a brilliant move because this pile of rocks it's bigger it's in the foreground but still those riders are something that would attract our attention very strongly because it's it's a more um it's a more uh it's a more familiar subject in a way it's more distinct you see the horses and you see the riders so something here by putting a strong contrast it's kind of almost like it tells you but this is closer to us but make sure to notice as the viewer this is closer to us and also it, it it's used as a link from the rocks onto the strong contrast and onto the riders to put these too strong of a focal points two as in the number two strong of focal points in a scene and have them so masterfully interact with one another that's something on a completely different uh, level um 
you know, you can render something realistically, you can nail the values, nail the colors, but when it's time to create a full, complete painting that sings and that everything is related and everything works together and everything interacts together, it's a completely different skill. And just a couple of honorable mentions that are also really cool, the way he placed the riders, one that's facing to the side, one that's facing a little towards us, they're walking in a line. I, I can swear this this guy is looking at us, which is really cool. I'm not sure, I think due to the feathers, it looks like you know the feathers are at the back, so I could swear that this guy has his head uh, rotated to us. A man or a woman, I don't know. Um, so that's a really neat. And then the rocks. There are markings on the rocks. So kind of uh, old drawings that you would find in caves and different details. And just to put that in is so clever. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's what it is, right? It looks like animals. There's a horned animal here. There are people here maybe with an animal. Uh, there are leaves. There is this spiral little pattern that's just so cool and it took me a moment to notice it and it's dead in the center just this is one of my favorites here uh, the more i talk about it the more i realize it just perfect balance really uh, here's another one this one's called peekaboo uh, why this stood out to me is going back to what i said earlier that use of blue here is just pure genius i love that that blue establishes the scene so well it it leads to so the the whole thing is muted right there's some yellows of course there's some other colors uh, there's the brown, but it's all pretty much muted. And then that blue in the middle puts it all in the right context. That's what I think. And then, of course, it is complemented by these peach colors here to the left, slightly lighter pinks. Uh, really, really neat. Again, without overwork, somehow still keeping clarity with all of these details, uh, which is a, an incredible feat in of itself. This one's gone crabbing, I believe, yes. Uh, I wanted to include it as a more of a, a, the abstract work, right? Kind of similar to the blue florals, blue florals or blue flowers, I don't remember. Um, it's just really a cute one, I think. There, there is a boy and a dog here. I think the website said it to a boy and a dog. Uh, and that thing that is used to, uh, I guess, uh, fish or hunt crabs, I'm not sure, uh, but just, uh, this is so beautiful that this uh, attempt at letting go and painting something a little more loosely and maybe different from the usual style, uh, I love it, I love it and I would want myself to always be able to do that, to step outside uh, of my habits and norms and do something a little different. Again, I have no idea if that was the meaning that this painting had for uh, for him. But who knows? You know, that's how I interpret it, right? I won't assume that's uh, the same for anyone else, really. Uh, here's one, I think, so this is uh, probably the last one. Yeah, uh, it's called Northern Monarch. Uh, I wanted to save this one for the last because it just is one of my favorites. Um, and unlike the previous one, I do believe this is a snowy scene, right? First of the polar bear is a bit of a giveaway, if it is indeed a polar bear. It says Northern Monarch, so it could be that. Um, now, it just goes to show you how the colors play a different role. What do I mean by that? There are a lot of greens and a lot of yellows and, and quite strong colors, but this still reads to me as snow and, and you know, an icy surface. And that's because of the values, I think. Because the values here are much lighter and there are fewer elements in the background. There aren't any trees, really. So it's almost like the colors play on a different vertical, a different axis than the rest, uh, than some other fundamentals like values and, and shape. Um, so just a cool example of how, again, with expressive colors, you can still convey a very specific idea, like a snowy uh, landscape, right? Uh, maybe it's the North Pole, maybe it's not. I don't know, maybe it's Alaska, maybe it's North, maybe it's Canada, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I bet you there's a bit of snow here, and at least a bit of it. Um, and not to mention the colors are beautiful. That's one of my personal favorite ways of painting. Uh, strong or clear contrast in the values, then a lot of expressive colors. And this is just a showcase of the best, uh, I think, of his work. Um, and it's funny because it may not be his, may not have been his favorite. Um, I may be in the minority of, of loving this one in particular, but that goes to show you art is very subjective and everyone can interpret it the way they want. To me, this is one of my favorites all times. It would be this and the first one with the wolves, of course.
what was it waiting for the fog to clear or was it a different uh, something uh, a different name but in any case these two are my favorites and i always love to start with my favorite and with my favorite uh, and with that we can move on to the outer world i'll do again a few quick announcements uh so let's do that so thank you once again for watching i really do appreciate it uh and be sure to check out the links again in the description box you can read more about morden and you can also um uh, check out the paintings of course in the gallery a couple of Final kind of announcements I said I will include. Just a quick update, the watercolor realism course is nearly done. I have maybe three more lectures, lessons to edit, and then it's a process of about a week to set the whole thing up technically, and we'll do like a launch stream probably, so be, be on the lookout for that. One more thing, I do want to do a giveaway on the Discord and a competition. So what I'll basically do is, I'm still planning it, but it's gonna be out in the next couple of days. So the Discord, if you don't know, it's kind of like just a chat and you can share a bunch of stuff there. So I'll put a link below. It's gonna be time limited, probably for about three days. Try and join as soon as you can. I will post more links in the future, but I want it to grow gradually. So here's what's gonna be. I'm gonna post like a prompt or like a thing, like a banner, and I will announce the competition. And then you will have a certain time frame to submit. Uh, and then there will be winner, a couple of winners. I'm still planning it out. But what I will say is don't stress too much if you don't make it in time or something like that, or you watch this video in the future, there will be more, okay? I do plan on doing a lot more in the Discord actually. So be sure to check that out, link in the description box below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment. It really helps it reach more people and I would really appreciate it if by chance, this is the first video of me that you watch. Be sure to subscribe if you still aren't, hit the bell, to receive notifications because I do go live almost every week. And check out the courses also if you want the links in the description box below. Thank you so much. We'll see you again real soon.